but were eliminated early in the playoffs. Highlights in 75-76 include a stunning 12-6 victory over the Soviet Union, the worst defeat ever suffered by the Russians. Danny Gere scored 50 goals that year, and Rick Martin 49. In the playoffs, Buffalo was eliminated by the New York Islanders. The following year, the Sabres registered 104 points, good for second place in the Adams division. But again, they were eliminated by the New York Islanders. Again in 77-78, the Sabres enjoyed a fine regular season, beat the Rangers in the opening round of the playoffs, but lost to Philadelphia in the quarterfinals. The 1978-79 season would mark the end of an era. On December the 3rd, 1978, Punch Imlach and coach Marcel Pronovo were fired. The Imlach era was over. Billy Inglis was appointed coach and John Anderson general manager on an interim basis. They did an admirable job, but Buffalo lost again in the playoffs, this time to Pittsburgh. But on June 11, 1979, a new era began. Scotty Bowman was hired as coach and GM, and a new slogan was adopted, the best is yet to come. Bowman quickly led Buffalo to a second place overall finish with 110 points in 1980, and the Sabres defeated first Vancouver, then Chicago in the Stanley Cup playoffs and moved on to meet the New York Islanders in the semifinals. And despite the fact that Gilbert Perro was outstanding in that series, Buffalo lost four games to two. It was a good start for Bowman, but you could almost sense that changes were in the wind, that he would move towards youth. The first change was made in March. Jerry Korab to L.A. for their number one draft choice in 1982. The following year, Buffalo won the Adams division, and Bowman continued to make changes. On December the 2nd, in a blockbuster trade, the popular Danny Gare, Derek Smith, and Jim Schoenfeld were traded to Detroit for Mike Foligno, Brent Peterson, and Dale McCourt. Goaltender Bob Sobey was sent in a separate deal for future considerations. In March of 1981, Richard Martin, Buffalo's second all-time leading scorer, was sent to L.A. for their number one draft pick in 1983. In the first round of the playoffs, Buffalo defeated Vancouver, but lost to Minnesota in the quarterfinals. In 81-82, Buffalo finished a disappointing third in the Adams division and were eliminated by Boston in the opening round of the playoffs. During the June 82 entry draft, Scotty Bowman secured three first-round picks. Buffalo had its own pick. They owned L.A.'s pick from the Corab trade, and just before the draft, Bowman sent Don Edwards, Richie Dunn, and Buffalo's second pick to Calgary for their first and second picks, and Calgary's second pick in 1983. Bowman didn't waste his choices. Phil Housley, Paul Sear, and Dave Andertruck were drafted in that order. The youth movement was in high gear. 1982-83 was a surprising year for the Sabres. The youngsters were developing faster than expected, and in the opening round of the playoffs, Buffalo stunned Montreal three games to none, Bob Sauvé shutting them out twice at the Montreal Forum. In the quarterfinals, they clashed with the Boston Bruins, only to be defeated in overtime in the seventh game at the Boston Garden on a goal by the brilliant Brad Park. In the 1983 June entry draft, general manager Scotty Bowman again went to work. Once again, the Sabres ended up with three first-round picks. Buffalo had L.A.'s first pick from the Rick Martin trade in 81. They had their own pick, and just prior to the draft, Bowman traded Tony McKegney, Andre Savard, and J.F. Sauvé to Quebec for Real Cluche and Quebec's first-round choice. Bowman chose Tom Barrasso, Norm Lacombe, and Adam Creighton. And in the second round, Buffalo had Calgary's pick, and they chose John Tucker. The 1983-84 campaign was one of many memories for Buffalo. The team set an NHL record by winning 10 consecutive games on the road. Phil Housley became the youngest defenseman to ever score 30 goals. Dave Andrichuk blossomed as a top NHL scorer. And Tom Barrasso, the young goaltender just out of high school, won the Calder and Vezina trophies and was named to the first All-Star team. But Buffalo suffered a devastating loss to Quebec in the playoffs. And the team and fans would have to wait yet another year.